Welcome to Stock Odds Odds and End Podcast with Dave and Rob, December 3rd edition. Good evening, Rob. How's everything? Hey, not too bad. Uh, defaulted to a Sunday here again, but uh, hopefully people can review this before the start of trading. Trying to get some stuff out to them and hopefully it's in provide some value here. So uh, let's go sure. through this. Um, so we got the uh, SPY daily. Now, what I find interesting, we did actually uh, hit a new high relative to July just by a few cents there. And then we uh, pulled back. So we did close below, but obviously we, so, so it is a new closing high relative going back to, you know, last March and so on. Um, so we have a new, a new closing high. And uh, that puts us into an interesting situation of, you know, can we can we build on this through the month of December? So we're going to look at some seasonality a bit later. Um, but uh, I know a lot of people like to look at things from high minus low. So the higher things get, the more likely they think it's going to come back. Um, but um, if you notice how the um, the moving averages are swinging up and the Bollinger Bands are swinging up. Uh, a pullback, you know, may not even uh, for the foreseeable future, you know, fill fill this gap here. We may we may build for some time yet. There is some risk in December too. We'll look at that uh, as well in this session. So here's the cues. Um, obviously, the cues did uh, punch ab above July and did have a little bit of a a pullback, but they're on a shelf here and um, looks like. Um, you know, there's some consolidation, so we could also see the queues start to rebound. Here's the uh, diamonds. So the Dow has been on fire here. It actually took out uh, the end of uh, July's high pretty robustly in, in the last two sessions. So this uh, represents a, a real sort of flight to the blue chips, probably because uh, you know, people are after such a big run in in the Magnificent Seven and some others, um, you know, tech stocks and discretionary and communications and so on. They're kind of trying to you know, find some value and they don't want to be out of the market altogether. Uh, as we approach year end, they're just trying to reposition, find some value. So um, that's um, it's quite that's, that's quite uh, impressive moves here. And then the the Russell had an explosive day on Friday. You can see it uh, take out its uh, recent range that it's been trading in. And I might set my eyes on this uh, beginning of September high here for us to track up to that if it wants to continue. So uh, Russell was a little bit uh, uh, choppy and and um, you know had a pretty rough kind of November compared to previous novembers we've often seen it a lot smoother but it you know it really took off at the beginning and then it just pulled back and took everybody by surprise popped again and then it's been in a channel so this is a this is good solid breakout see if it can build on that so that that kind of plays into the same theme as as the blue chips if these other stocks have run and we've seen growth uh in the magnificent seven and and um other tech areas, you know, are there smaller companies, you know, now going to try to catch up? The mid caps actually have performed really well for the year. It's just the uh, small caps that have, um, you know, lag behind the other indices. So maybe they'll, maybe it's just delayed and uh, now they'll start to catch up a little bit. Here's the performances for Friday and for the week. We saw real estate uh, on top for the for Friday, but also for the week. And the theme there is just this expectation of uh, rates, you know, not going much higher, if at all, and maybe a cut in um, May as the Fed funds watch tool is um, sort of forecasting on a probability perspective. Um, again, it's not guaranteed, but the market factors in everything that it knows or can anticipate and so that's what it's trying to do now is say hey if we're going to be going that direction and you know we're going to expect a cut 
well, we better get into these back, pile back into these REITs and home builders and everything else. Let's uh, let, let's buy them now. So that's what tends to happen. Not, you know, it, you would expect, or if you were new to the markets, you might think, well, in May, then then the real estate should be bouncing back. Well, no, it'll go ahead of time uh, as long as that uh, narrative continues and that expectation continues. So even with uh, some of the Fed speak this past week that um, kind of tried to push back a little bit against that um, enthusiasm the market was displaying. Um, you know, still, still the market is uh, saying, ah, no, you know, we still expect you to cut next next uh, May. Now, when you look at the presidential cycle and the potential re-election of the incumbents. Um, you know, you would expect softer monetary policies ahead of that. Uh, it's, you know, we've seen that in history and I'm not going to say any, you know, monkey business goes on. It's just uh, for some reason, it seems to be a, a bit of a cycle and uh, monetary policy gets a little bit easier, or softer or, you know, st st stimulation, <laughs> I guess. And, uh, you know. Maybe the uh, current administration gets reelected or whatever. <laughs> anyway, we're not supposed to talk politics here, so who knows? Um, basic materials usually benefits from the dollar that's uh, gone down. Now, we did have the dollar break below the moving average and bounce back up a little bit, still hugging around that area. It, it didn't make any noticeable gains. It just kind of hanging out. So. Um, maybe that's conducive to the basic materials, but we also had gold uh, move up substantially, and we'll take a look at that. Uh, down in the bottom, we still have uh, energy uh, and then communication services uh, with Google and Meta really pulled back um, this, uh, this past week here. So that's why you see it down in the in the basement. All right, uh, this was uh, the month of November, which ended on a Thursday. So we just want to take a look at what actually happened. Technology was up 13% for the month, whereas the SPY was only up uh, 8.67 or some, something similar to what the industrials or basic materials did. Um, consumer defensive was down um, again, you know, with, with a bullish month risk on. You know, healthcare, utilities, consumer defensive are just not going to do that well. That's that's not where the growth is. The growth aspect expectations are technology and you know cyclical and real estate was bouncing back and you know that kind of thing. And uh, energy, we we find that uh, a lot of uh, commodity traders have been leaning on that really hard, so it's been selling all the rallies. Every once in a while, you see a, a, a up day for energy, but it doesn't last long and. So for the month, it was uh, in the basement here. So this is the uh, sector uh, market sector ETFs. You'll notice that relative volumes have increased again. The last time we did this, we had really low relative volume, and that was because um, the week of uh, Thanksgiving, you know, we only had three and a half trading days and volumes were, were rel you know, about half of, of normal. Uh, but things have uh, bounced back here. And um, notably, you can see basic materials, uh, 1.44, and the diamonds. That was the, you saw the Dow's uh, two-day move there. So significant volume going into that, as well as the Russell, 1.85. So you can you can track relative volume to, you know, confirm. You want to see moves where volume is increasing. Uh, either on the downside or the upside to give you more information and. Uh, Anyway, so communications again for the week was the, the one that was underperforming and uh, real estate having a phenomenal week, IWM as well. Most of that came in on Friday, of course. Um, here's the map of the market for the week. You can see some of the Magnificent Seven uh, getting a bit softer, pulling back a little bit, still you know, way above where they started at, at, at November the 1st. You know, we were in oversold condition at the end of October. Uh, that was, uh, you know, down from the high in July. So August slipped, September slipped further. I mean, we had a few little rallies in the 
middle of all that, October slipped further. So we were really in oversold conditions. And uh, November 1st, things just uh, popped up. Uh, we had actually a, a reversal indication on October the 31st and November 1st, things popped up and it just built on that all through November. And the, the seasonality for November is uh, quite robust. Um, and uh, we even exceeded by double what the normal, uh, you know, uh, November seasonality is. So we had a very, very robust uh, month. And uh, it was one of 10 since 1928, where we did over 8%. So very robust and um, yeah, so now we come into December and uh, you know, we wanna know uh, what this uh, little podcast is about is giving us some insights for next week, but also, um, you know, for the month of December since we're early in that at the moment here. So what you can see from this map of the week um, is, you know, more of a, a broad market, um, you know, we we didn't have energy participating. We had some softness in consumer defense of healthcare and so on, but uh, you know, real estate was doing good. Industrials okay. Consumer cyclical was still hanging in there. Software, um, you know, banks. You know, even the regional banks uh, did really well. Okay, um, this is the weekly list that uh, we produce. It's curated from Friday's close for the following week. And uh, this list had alpha over the market. Market was up 0.98% for the week. And the um, list did 2.61%. Uh, so we had 11 shorts and 11 longs. Um, let's take a look at uh, those uh, symbols just to see if there was some production uh, for the week in those symbols so these are our shorts here um you can see that um, we had an incredible opportunity in apo where um you know even if you started the week and you put it on short you still got this uh, amazing drop after it went against you now if you were using the concept of trade some hold some for swing trading where you look at adding uh, one one thing we've discussed discussed in the past is take the previous week's high minus low divide it in half add that to the open price for the start of the new week and if it moves against you by that amount add a layer if it drops subtract a layer so that's a way to get some production going. In a case of um, uh, you know this, uh, this this moved against you um, you know substantially, but then it dropped and opened down here and rallied back. So there would have been an opportunity uh, to cover some, and that was uh, that was a 15 minute bar right there. So it, it it gave you some time to recognize it was turning after that open. Uh, so there was some production there. Same thing with this one, a little bit of uh, potential production. If it if stuff does come in for you and you're going into like a Friday where you would normally close it at the close and it starts to um, come from a nice discount where you are profitable and starts moving higher and it's already the Friday, you know, it's it's probably a, a good idea just to lock it in and replace that with some spy or another ETF of, of a sector, or if you're taking off this short, then find a long you can take off as well. Um, stuff like this, you know, it just kind of moved against you the, for the week and you didn't have much opportunity for trading it. Um, could argue from the open here to that, uh, high there may have been opportunity to add shopify really not much opportunity um ups neither so really uh well the pm could have could have given you a bit of opportunity in, in a sense of a nice discount again on your short friday so these two are kind of similar where it starts moving up from that no reason why you couldn't lock it in so those were the longs let's look at or sorry, those were the shorts. Let's look at the longs here. 
Um, if you're seeing like something like this where a steady rise, you know, stay with it. You had a gap up on Friday. It's always good to um, look at potentially protecting that. Now, I know that it closed relatively similar to, um, you know, to that high. But the, the, the rule would be that if you get a big move up and it starts to roll over and it again, it's a Friday and you have a profit in your long, uh, consider locking that profit. Don't let it disappear on you. So in most cases, you know, we had some good uptrends where you can just stay with it. Um, there was a case here that this one dropped. It might have been worthy of uh, adding another layer, potentially ED as well, adding something. Uh, but otherwise, on the long side, not a whole lot of production available. So you can always hold from the open of Monday to the, the close of Friday, or if you see opportunity to add or subtract, then include that in your workflow and uh, it can help. Uh, so back to our slides here. So we had a nice, nice week, a nice finish there. Um, just as you know, it, it, if the market goes down a lot, in a particular week, we'll probably have alpha over the market. We may not make money, but we might do substantially better because we are hedged with one long and one short from each sector. So the variance is quite low. But if we have a big move up, let's say we, you know, market does four or five percent for the week, it's doubtful that we can perform to that level. Like this is you know, at, at the high end, we see maybe 2.8, 2.9 for the week. Uh, we don't really see 4 or 5% for a, a week when you have a, a long, short, hedged basket. So when you take it across all weeks, you still want to see that, you know, low variance, you know, overall ch chugging along, doing a little better than the market. And if you add some production, that can certainly help as well. But this was a nice finish this week here. So um, here's our ETFs for December. Um, Dave, what do we see here? We got, um, we, we were looking at 24% of these symbols are positive and 76 negative, but you have to look at some of these are bearish. A weak week missing oil. Right. So like so this isn't a true picture just because you've got inverse you've got inverse ETFs here. Um, so let's just forget about the forget about the volatility ones because you've got you got VIX, VIX, VIX. Just for, take those out. Let's just look at the main sector or commodity based ETFs here. Uh, GDX, GDXJ says it's uh, pretty robust for the month of December. So this is the monthly, we're looking at the whole month. Now, when we show you what gold has already done, it may have been factoring in ahead of time December's bullishness because it just recently had a run. Um, so we can, it's possible to continue to build on that. Socks, semiconductors. Um, Brazil. Japan, so financials, silver, gold, yeah. On this side, XOP, got a bit of, uh, so XL, XOP, XLE. So while gold is a bit stronger, uh, looks like energy is still a bit weaker. And usually, historically, we've seen energy supposed to do better between August and November and then tapers off December, January. Um, but we've had a pretty bad spell for uh, energy these last few months anyway. So it could have changed. Yeah, but it doesn't seem <laughs> too much to to build on there. Um, maybe, uh, you know, maybe OPEC can get some of these countries to stop overproducing or something because uh, apparently there's been a lot of cheating going on. <laughs> so um, what's your thoughts? Anything from that uh, ETF list, Dave? Well, what's interesting is jets, which is the airline ETF, and oil are both down. Usually there's some kind of inverse correlation there, but 
the fact that oil is expected to be down and airlines. That's kind of. Unique. Yeah, well, I mean, expected to be down. Yes, in terms of performance, but the odds of it actually occurring. So the way that we read this is the higher the odds. The more likely the occurrence of that performance. Um, and so, you know, a lot of these are only 33.3. So um, out of all the month, out of all the years, it's it's basically saying, yeah, the overall performance is negative, but you know, the probability of it occurring is is less. Whereas um, over here, looking at uh, GDX and GDXJ, you know, we're seeing 66.7 and 55.6. So this is more likely to to occur or it has been occurring more often so keep that in perspective not a whole lot to go on here from the etf side of things to be honest it's uh, it's a bit jumbled but let's look at the stocks i think there'll be more clarity here now we see 57 percent of these are bullish for the month and again, you could move these sliders around if you go to the actual screener to kind of drill in on the volume metrics that you want. Um, but what are we seeing? Strength in the solar stocks because um, the TAN ETF is expected to be up and you've got uh, right. N phase, Sunrun. F cell, yeah. We've got. Uh, yeah, some. A little bit, maybe a little bit more uh, risk on to some degree. And over here, I mean, it's, there's not a lot of big names in here. It's it's kind of pulling. We probably should move the slider a little bit to just uh, increase, like cut out some of the lower volume stuff. Is there not not a lot to go on here either. So you guys can play with that yourself, but um, this, you know, December isn't the same kind of month as November. I mean, it's supposed to have pretty good breadth overall. Um, it has had many Decembers where it's continued after a good November and continued to run. So keep that in mind. Uh, but uh, if this is the seasonality for the December. And um, you can see that Mondays and Fridays in December tend to have more concern. Tuesdays and Wednesdays are usually uh, more bullish for the events. We've already passed the first trading day and the first Friday that, that occurred on Friday, so that's out of the way. Mid-month seasonality starts on December the 13th. And then we have the first Friday. So for some reason, mid-month seasonality is not like most of the other months of the year seasonality, which are definitely a big bump. So we have payroll deposits and 401k money that goes in each month. Now, I don't know why it would be different for December. Can you think of uh, why we would have such a bad December? Would it be... Related maybe people to the holiday season. Yeah. Hmm? Maybe people uh, show up their books before they take holiday vacations before Christmas and all. So they kind of close up shop yeah. mid-December and then off to well, vacations. Well, okay, there, there are typically a lot of layoffs. Like we do have we do have a hiring, you know, boom kind of before. Like before Black Friday and stuff, and then we kind of do have a lot of corporate layoffs in december about mid-december that could that could be part of it it could also be people like do factory in holidays between christmas and new year's or in the in, in january and so they're pulling some money out or something or just not de not deploying the money that would normally go into the market could also be related to historically some tax loss selling things like that and we saw that last year for sure it could also be that we had such a bad 2018 that this that's still in the in the cards here. Kind of similar to when we go into March and April and we look back and you know how COVID affected some of those mm -hmm. years, right? 
Yeah. So I, I'm thinking that the 2018 sell-off does impact this as well. So just note that the 13th and the 14th and the 15th of December are showing this. Now, something else happened recently. When you look at the locates that are available on some of these leveraged ETFs, when the locate quantity is increased and there's more availability, it's often come just before a sell-off in the market. So we've just seen that recent increase. So I would then flag the potential for a re repeat of 2018. I don't know if we have the same conditions. I think we had debt ceiling issue and other stuff that also contributed to that. But um, there's uh, some other things that are kind of similar in what we might experience here this December. So I'm not saying for sure there's going to be a sell-off. I would see. I would say be ready for a correction the week of the what is it, 11th through 15th here? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah, the 11th through 15th. So we'll talk about that more on either Saturday or Sunday when we do our next podcast. Uh, we'll take a look at how we finish this week and see if we can see signs of a potential um, sell off that week. But but this is what this is signaling. So, you know, I'm not going to ignore it, you know, uh, and we've already had a big run this year. So, I mean, I think a lot of people would be kind of cheering for a bit of a pullback if they want to buy, you know, and I, but I don't see a lot of tax loss selling either because we've had a good, you know, a good year and, um, and who would want to sell even some of the laggers that haven't performed yet because there's signs now that they could perform, right? Or we could go into January and they could perform. So why sell them this year and lose, lose that opportunity, lose that traction. Okay. We do, we do see that the IWM is potentially able to outperform the SPY. Um, so again, I think the SPY's performance is being in, impacted by the 2018 sell-off because um, if you go back 50 years, it's probably December is slightly positive with when you add in the Santa Claus rallies and all the other things that have happened. Um, but this is only going back eight to 10 years, so it's not uh, a huge, huge sample. It's just the more recently weighted. OK, here's the 10 year note. Um, we, we've seen this this move higher. Um, and again, that's been a contributing factor to. The real estate and home builder area. And it's getting close to its uh, 200 day MA up here. So I think it wants to go tag it. You know, that's that's the feeling I get anyway. Why not? Let's go try that. Let's go try to tag that. See if we can get up there. Here's the US dollar. Um, last time we talked about it, we would said that it it possibly could trade lower, which it it did for one day, I think. When yeah, it went down here. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So so right after we spoke about this last weekend. It did drop and then it reversed and kind of came back up to it. So we were discussing its potential is to, to head lower, but also it could hang around this 200 day MA and that's what it's decided to do. It didn't hold back the basic materials, though, even though it turned and went back up because, hey, it's way down from its highs and people are still expecting that if there's not going to be any more interest rate hikes, then why wouldn't the dollar be softer? Right. If we are going to get more hikes, then the dollar should, you know, spring back and head back up. But I think we're, you know, either in a situation of no more or one more and done or maybe, you know, a cut expected in May, like they say. Here's crude. Yeah, like normally from uh, August. Well, it did it did rally in August. Normally from August to November, it still holds up much better, but we had a pretty big sell off here. Since uh, the high in September. And, um, you know, it might want to go go down and test these this support level down here. Here's the VIX. We did say that it's declining and our expectations without 
a market route without some other bigger deal going on geopolitically or globally, we expect it to continue to decline. And it's been on this uh, this trajectory. That means that the amount of production you can get, the amount of in and out action within the same day, the amount of swing trades and production, all changes with a lower VIX. So first you want predictability, and then you want volatility to give you repeated chances to make the same money over and over again. And when the VIX drops, you just get less frequency. Okay, more frequency up here, but you still need predictability in order to harvest it properly. Less frequency as we decline. So keep that in mind. Pair traders, we've often talked about as volatility declines, we go to three way trading, which is instead of just trading, you know, Chevron versus Exxon, you might trade Chevron Conoco Exxon or or Chevron Exxon XLE or, you, you know, you add another symbol to give you more decisions, more opportunity to say which of the combinations has more premium or more discount. So when volatility declines, we look at increasing the amount of relationships that we compare. Okay. Gold, there's the gold. Look at that. So mm -hmm. I'm not a gold bug or anything. I'm just uh, noting that we, this is the weekly. The other charts were daily. This is a weekly chart that I put up here because I wanted you to see you know, what happened in 2020. So there's, uh, you know, uh, the, the boom, boom we had because of the COVID situation. It tapered off, but it held, held in its own pretty good. We had another little spurt up here, you know, when the war started with Russia and Ukraine. And then we popped back down again. And then we had another uh, bit of a, a boost here when we had the, um, regional banking crisis and then uh recently um oh sorry the re the regional banking crisis was in it was this year sorry um, um here's 2023 so this was the the war the russia ukraine war and then uh going to 2023 here and we see right around in here the regional banking crisis and then uh, now we're, we're up even higher and we, we took out all these highs. So this is kind of a shooting star situation here. It may pull back, but if, if our seasonality says that December is normally good, we've just started one day, one day into December. So this was last week, right, the week, and uh, we could build on this. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Economic calendar, take it away, Dave. Yeah, and in terms of economic reports and Fed speak, there's a general theme for the week, and it's just the health of the economy. So Monday, we have factory orders. Tuesday, there's this ISM services report, which is non-manufacturing, and there's also a PMI report, which is a survey of business leaders to see how they feel about the economy. And then the employment is big, too. Wednesday, we have an employment number, ADP employment report. Um, Thursday, jobless claims, Friday, some more employment data. So this shows us if um, there's weakness in employment and um, if the economy is cracking, then that'll give more confidence to the market that uh, they won't need to increase interest rates or maybe do rate cuts next year. So so there's a couple of themes of the week is uh, the health of the economy. And One thing I want to... Uh, go ahead. One thing I want to point out is look at how many 10 a.m. reports there are one of the things that we look at is we always set our our clocks you know set our alarms so you don't forget that it's 10 a.m and it's not just because of these reports we often have reversals at 10 a.m or you have peak volatility or you have peak performance mm -hmm. so with your baskets you always look at how did how is it done sometimes it, they're down and then they rally up to 10 a.m sometimes they peak at 10 a.m um, any of these types of things at 10 a.m. could cause a reversal or a continuation. So it's important just to ask the question of the market. What are you doing? What have you done between 930 and 10? Am I you know, preparing for a reversal or a continuation? Okay, go ahead. 
in terms of earnings, there's not much going on, but there is. Um, let's see, we have uh, AutoZone on Tuesday, but mainly on Thursday, there's two of them. Broadcom, which is a chip stock, and then Lululemon, which is retail. So those are two big ones, but uh, nothing earth shattering. Okay, good. Well, um, if that's it, any more comments? No. All right. Well, thanks for your help and uh, have a good trading day tomorrow. Good night.